goodwill and gratitude are the framework for the practice. Look at the Four Noble Truths, which Venerable Sariputta said contain all the other teachings. But what contains the Four Noble Truths? The fact that someone on awakening would focus on the problem of suffering, teaching other people how they could stop suffering. What does that come from if not from goodwill? The fact that someone would go around in northern India for 45 years teaching these truths to people, everyone who is willing to listen, able to practice, is motivated by goodwill and its companions' compassion and empathetic joy. So it's good to think of that as we practice. We should make goodwill the framework for our practice as well. We're looking for happiness that's true. That's goodwill for ourselves. But the fact that you are looking for a true happiness also spills out into goodwill for other people. People who find true happiness find it a lot easier to think about the well-being of others. People who are looking only for false happiness tend to be very irritable. They want happiness, but they're not getting the real thing, and often take it out on other people. So looking for your own happiness, your own true happiness, is not a selfish thing. And it doesn't involve selfish activities. After all, generosity, virtue, meditation, these things are all beneficial for others. In addition to being you know, primarily beneficial for ourselves. So we're looking for happiness that doesn't create boundaries. This is why the Buddha said we should develop goodwill in all directions. Goodwill without limit, compassion without limit, empathetic joy without limit, equanimity without limit to balance out your wish for happiness. For the cases where it simply is not going to happen quite yet. And you realize there's no hypocrisy. If you're looking for true happiness, you have to look inside, so it's not going to involve taking anything away from anyone else. So there's an ease with which you can go from thoughts of your true happiness to the true happiness of others. And it's good to make goodwill the framework of your practice every day. I've mentioned many times John Munn's practice. As soon as he got up in the morning, goodwill for everyone. After he woke up from his afternoon nap, goodwill for everyone. Before going to sleep at night, goodwill for everyone. And John Sua would recommend making goodwill the, <coughs> the framework for each meditation session, especially when you're doing a formal session like this. Goodwill in the beginning, which is primarily for you even though you're extending goodwill for everyone. It's goodwill. Those thoughts of goodwill help to clear the mind and prepare it for the meditation. The Buddha taught this to his son. Before you focus on the breath, try goodwill for everyone. That helps to clear up any issues you may have had from the day. And it's good to stop and think, what does it mean to have goodwill? means that you wish that other people will create the causes for happiness for themselves, and you're happy to see them do it. And if there's anything you can do to help, you're happy to help. And that's a thought you can have for anyone, even people who have been unkind, cruel, thoughtless. The people who have done a lot of damage in the world, you can have this thought for them without any conflict. We would like to see them stop their, their bad ways. And then you can settle in to the present moment a lot more easily if you can hold this thought for everyone. Then after the end of the meditation, thoughts of goodwill for everyone again. This time, though, it's more for them. So when you're coming out of concentration, your mind is stronger. 
and the force of those thoughts of goodwill will be stronger as well. You're coming from a place of well-being. And there are people out there who are very sensitive to the fact that someone is wishing them goodwill. So you do this for them. And you also make this your attitude that you're going to carry into the world. Goodwill for everyone you meet. Even during the meditation, it's good to have that practice from the very beginning. Sometimes you'll be sitting and meditating and thoughts of someone else will come up, either just simply as a thought or as a vision. And before it goes away, I think thoughts are goodwill of that person. It helps it, the vision go away easily. The thoughts will go away with a lot less, with not fewer hooks, let's put it that way. So it's good to develop a practice of goodwill all around. It's nourished also by thoughts of gratitude. Now, gratitude isn't something you have for everybody. It's specifically for people who have gone out of their way to help you. It starts, of course, with your parents. Without them, you wouldn't even be here. Your teachers, friends who've helped, even strangers who've helped. You can think of the Buddha and all the noble disciples who've passed on the teaching, and all the regular people who've passed on the teaching. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't know anything of the Dharma. As the Buddha said, without him as an admirable friend, we'd have no idea that there would be a way out of suffering. Sometimes when you think about it, it seems that the Buddha was more concerned about us than we're concerned about ourselves. He was concerned about our true well-being. And we look at our own our own actions and our own thoughts about what we want to do. And true well-being doesn't often come that often into, our, into the calculation. We have other ideas of well-being, other ideas of happiness. So think about it. The Buddha was more compassionate to us than we are to ourselves. So the fact that you're here training your mind depends on a lot of people. These thoughts of gratitude are helpful in two ways. On the one hand, it does make it easier to start with the people you're grateful to. You recognize the fact that it was through their actions, and many times through their sacrifices, that you've benefited. It's a sign that you appreciate goodness. It also gives you a sense of your own worth. There are people who've sacrificed for you. You're part of this long continuum of people helping one another, going out of their way for one another. And when you have a sense of that, then it's a lot more likely that you want to pass it on, pass on the goodness. You appreciate, appreciate the hard decisions people had to make to help you. It makes it easier to make some of those hard decisions to help others. If all you can think about is how I got where I am just because of me without anybody else's help. On the one hand, it's just wrong. And two, it creates a very narrow mind, a mind that's not likely to go out of its way for others, a mind that's not very likely to create any good karma. It's certainly not the mind that's going to help you find it into suffering. As the Buddha said, if you don't have a generous mind, if you're stingy, there's no way you're going to hit, be able to attain jhana, much less gain any of the noble attainments. So these attitudes of goodwill, gratitude, are good to develop, good to cultivate, because they enrich our practice. There can be times when the practice gets dry, when you don't seem to be making any headway at all. Well, at the very least, you're going to have goodwill. It's a thought that's available to everybody. And you see, in the Buddha's case, what goodwill did, it took him all the way to awakening. Of course, it was assisted by other qualities. But it started with that wish, is there happiness that's true? Is there happiness that doesn't harm anybody? 
he said his search for awakening was a search for what is skillful. And that's what skillful means, something that is conducive to true happiness for yourself and for other people, other beings. So goodwill, when it's cultivated, can do a lot of things, a lot of good things. And it spreads its goodness around in all directions. <laughs>